Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to Sirkey Labs Physics and Chemistry tutorial for high school students. In today's episode, we discuss Dalton's laws of definite and multiple proportion, a prerequisite concept in stoichiometry. So stick around, watch, and learn. According to Dalton's law of definite proportion, all samples of a pure compound contain the same elements in the same proportion by mass. As an example, when different samples A, B, and C of isooctane, a component of gasoline and one of the standards used in the octane rating system are analyzed in terms of mass of carbon and hydrogen. They are found to have a carbon to hydrogen mass ratio of 5.33 is to 1. All right, as shown for all three samples in this table. The law of multiple proportions, on the other hand, states that when two elements react to form more than one compound, a fixed mass of one element will react with masses of the other element in a ratio of small whole number. For example, copper and chlorine can form a green crystalline solid with a mass ratio of 0 0.558 grams chlorine to 1 gram copper as well as a brown crystalline solid with a mass ratio of 1.116 grams chlorine is to 1 gram copper If we take a ratio of these ratios, we obtain a useful and possibly surprising result. A small whole number ratio. All right. This 2 is to 1 ratio means that the brown compound has twice the amount of chlorine per amount of copper as the green compound. Looking at the given questions now, we have question number one. Samples of compounds X, Y, and Z are analyzed with results shown in the next table. Question letter A. Do these data provide examples of the law of definite proportions, the law of multiple proportions, neither or both? Question letter B. What do these data tell you about compounds X, Y, and Z? As shown in this table, the three compounds X, Y, and Z are all clear, colorless liquid with strong odor. But the mass of carbon and the mass of the hydrogen are of varying amounts.
for our answers and solution. We bring back the given data. Notice that the carbon to hydrogen ratio of the compounds are 12 is to 1. All right. For substance X, 6 is to 1 for substance Y, and 12 is to 1 also for substance Z. If we take the ratio of ratios, like uh, X is to Y, the ratio is 12 is to 6 or 2 is to 1. And for x is to z, the ratio is 12 is to 12, or 1 is to 1. So, these data are examples of the loss of definite and multiple proportions. We say that samples x and y are two different compounds, while samples X and Z, all right, may or may not uh, be the same compound, right? Uh, although the ratio is the same, all right, one is to one, but it doesn't follow that the two compounds are uh, identical or the same compound. Before we proceed to question number two, let's refer back to these samples of isooctane, okay? Samples A, B, and C. It is worth emphasizing that although all samples of a particular compound have the same mass ratio, okay, the converse is not true in general, that is, samples that have the same mass ratio are not necessarily uh, the same substance. All right. So, for example, um, there are many compounds other than isooctane that also have a carbon to hydrogen mass ratio of 5.33 is to 1.00. For question number two, you have to tell if the given statement is a true or a false statement. So the statements are, number one, the whole number ratio of oxygen in water, H2O, to oxygen in hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, is equal to 1 is to 2. Statement number two. The law of multiple proportions is only concerned with atoms made up of the same elements. Question, uh, statement number three. The law of multiple proportions does not apply to sodium chloride, NaCl, and calcium chloride, CaCl2. Statement number four. The compounds CO2 or carbon dioxide and 2H2O or 2 moles of water obey the law of multiple proportions. And the last statement, the whole number ratio appears when the mass of an element combines with the fixed mass of another element. Here are the answers and explanations. For statement number one, the whole number ratio of oxygen in water to oxygen in hydrogen peroxide is equal to one is to two. 
So this statement we say is true. All right? The law of uh, definite proportion applies in the case of uh, the compounds water and uh, hydrogen peroxide because these two compounds uh, are made up of two the same types of elements, hydrogen and oxygen. And if you're going to take the ratio of oxygen in water to that of uh, oxygen in hydrogen peroxide, we have uh, one for uh, the oxygen in uh, water and then two for the oxygen in hydrogen peroxide. Therefore, the ratio is one is to two. For statement number two, the law of multiple proportions is only concerned with atoms made up of the same elements. So, this statement we say is considered a false statement, all right? Uh, the correct statement must be the law of multiple proportion is only concerned with compounds made up of the same elements. Statement number three. The law of multiple proportions does apply to sodium chloride NaCl and calcium chloride CaCl2. So our answer, this statement is considered false. Right? What is correct is the law of multiple proportion does not apply to NaCl and CaCl2. All right? Uh, for the same reason. All right? As uh, we mentioned in statement number two, because the two compounds are not made up of the same elements, all right? Although they have chlorine, but in NaCl, there is sodium, and in calcium chloride, there is calcium, all right? So, the law of multiple proportion does not apply. For statement number four, the compounds carbon dioxide CO2 and uh, 2H2O or 2 moles of water obey the law of multiple proportions. So we say that this statement is also false, all right? Uh, because what is correct is the compounds CO2 and uh, 2 moles of water does not or do not obey the law of multiple proportions. Again, because the two compounds are not made up of the same elements. And finally, for statement number five, the whole number ratio appears when the mass of an element combines with the fixed mass of another element. So our answer to question number five is that this statement is indeed a true statement. So that concludes our lecture for this topic. Till the next episode, Mabuhay, Masha Allah. Thank you very much for watching. Please follow me in my FB page and please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.